Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip. In today's quick tip, we're going to be taking a look at two commandlets. We're going to be taking a look at the invoke rest method and the invoke web request. Now, both of these uh, commands are used to, um, as you probably assumed it, call APIs, um, either REST APIs um, or just web pages. Uh, they can get you the plain HTML text as well. Um, so that could be very useful as well. Um, but we're going to be looking at them more on the side of REST APIs. Now, it's very rare that you would have two commandlets that do pretty much the same thing. And both of these will, you can invoke REST APIs, but they actually give you two completely different results. Um, one will give you a very simple result that could be used right away. Um, whereas the other one gives you a lot of extra data, which could be very, very useful. Uh, but you do have a little bit more work uh, to actually process the actual results of the API call. So let's actually go ahead and let's first use a um, API route uh, that is completely free to use. Um, so I went out on the internet to find uh, this API and actually this API is pretty helpful um, because it could actually give you um, basically random user data. Uh, so it'll give you like a name, a, a gender, an email, um, an address, all sorts of info, uh, basically for a random user that you can actually use to build up um, like a data set, um, which could be very helpful, especially if you're going through some of my other videos, uh, like the Active Directory management, and you need some random data, you don't have any data and you don't want to use uh, the CSV generator, or you just don't want to create it yourself, uh, you could easily use this API to actually generate um, some user data for you. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, so here's the URI. I'm actually going to provide this to you guys in the description down below so you guys can follow along um, with the video as well. And that's why I'm using just like a free API, not something that's like on my end um that's or something that's behind a paywall i want everyone to be able to actually benefit from this video so let's first look at the first one here and that's going to be the invoke rest method so let's go ahead and let's actually just call the commandlet so let's do an invoke rest method here and that's going to take uh basically two parameters in this case the uri which uh, we have in our variable here and then it also takes a method, which for this API call, we're going to be using the get method. So if we actually go ahead and we run this here, we actually see that we get a result. And if we actually store this in a variable called uh, rest method here, so let's go ahead, let's run this once again. And if we do a dollar sign rest method and we do a dot to see what we have, we actually have a dot info and we have a dot result. So if we do the dot, dot result in this case, we will see this is the info for our user. Uh, the API returns it very nicely. Um, we've got the gender, we've got uh, the name. So we've got the title first and last name. We've got the location, we've got email. So this API provides you tons of info. And you can access it through results and you can also do a dot info and this will give you um, a little bit of information on the seed of how they created that user uh, the results in the version of the api so this is a little bit less necessary this is something that the api provides you um but that's pretty much it you don't really it's just another piece of data that they give but the most important part to notice is that we're getting back PowerShell objects. Uh, we're not getting back JSON, which you would typically expect back from a REST API. We are getting a PowerShell object. And that is because in the invoke REST method, it actually calls the invoke web request and already pre-processes it. It does the conversion from JSON into a PowerShell object and only gives you the results. It doesn't give you the status code. It doesn't give you any of the headers. It doesn't give you the raw content of the page. It really just gives you that result converted from JSON into a PowerShell object. So now let's take a look at the other commandlet, 
which is actually the invoke rev request. And what we're going to do actually is we're going to go ahead, we're going to store that right away in a variable here called web request. And we're going to do an invoke dash web request. And once again, the parameters are actually identical. So we're going to pass in our URI and our method once again is going to be the get method. And let's go ahead and let's run this line. So if we actually take a look at what is inside web request, we will actually see that we have tons of information here. So we have the status code, we have the headers, um, images, raw content length. Uh, now the only thing is actually, now that I see it, uh, so here it is. So here's actually all the details here unfiltered. So here's the uh, the status code, the status description. So we know that it returned a status code of 200. It's okay. Here's the content. Um, so here's actually the result. And we're going to take a look at how this looks like in just a few seconds. Then we have the raw content. We have the headers that it returned, uh, the images, input fields, links, raw content. So this is all stuff that if you were to use um, like an internet browser and you go to the web page and the response, this is the type of response that your browser would get. It would treat it. Now you wouldn't necessarily see all this info. You would see the content um, on your screen, um, but it would also return headers that you would be able to go look in your browser um, in the inspector and see those headers and see all the status code would either be 200 201 or in the 400 series if something goes wrong um, or even 500. Um, so just let know that the web request will actually return the full response of that route, whereas the rest method will only return the actual content, the actual result of the call uh, converted into a PowerShell object. Now what we could do with the web request, so if we do our web request and we go look at the content, we are going to see that the content is basically just a bunch of text. And this is actually in JSON. So what we would actually have to do here is we would have to do a convert from dash JSON and actually run this here. And there we would actually get our PowerShell objects. So if we actually do this here, so if we do this, we store this into results. Now, if we go and look at see what result gives us here, we do a dot, we have our dot info and we have our dot result. So what the invoke rest method really does is it calls this invoke web request and then runs this and then returns you that result. Uh, so you're losing the headers, you're losing that status code, which maybe in your script, you don't necessarily need the status code, but if you do want that extra data because you're writing a commandlet or you're writing a function and you want to make sure that that API call succeeded, maybe you just want to check that status code to make sure that you got a 200 status code. If you didn't get a 200 status code, then you could throw a custom error to the user to say that something went wrong. Uh, so that's the benefit of using the invoke web request compared to invoke rest method. Um, there is nothing really wrong in my opinion to just use invoke rest method. If you know the API very well, uh, it could serve you very, very well. Uh, there are people that will always recommend to use invoke web request. Just this way you have that extra data. It doesn't hurt to have that extra data. It doesn't hurt to have the headers. It doesn't hurt to have the status code. It could give you some better error detection. It could just make your script a lot, uh, a lot better, a lot more secure as well, just because you can actually look at the status code, prevent errors, make it look nice to the user. So that is really the difference here um, is one will give you the actual response and one will give you a PowerShell object um, to where uh, you, you don't have to do anything. It's usable right away. Whereas the other one requires a little bit more extra work to get to the same result as invoke rest method. So that is the two main differences between uh, invoke rest method and invoke web request. I hope this kind of clears things up for you guys. Um, these are the two main ways to call APIs. They're both completely valid. They will both 
most likely work in any situation. Um, invoke rest method, I've never had an issue with it. Um, there might be situations where the API maybe isn't written at 100% to where you might need to call the invoke web request instead. Um, but I have yet to encounter that myself. Um, but these are the two ways I would definitely pick one. And once again, kind of like all the other things that I've mentioned is that if you pick one, just kind of stay with that one. Uh, make sure that, you know, on line four of your script, if you're using invoke rest method on line 20, use invoke rest method as well. Like don't kind of switch up halfway through. So that'll just confuse people that go to read your script and wondering why you're doing all this extra conversion, whereas above you didn't do that conversion. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or comments for me, please let me know down below in the comment section. Um, I know that I've had this question quite a few times. Uh, so if you guys want to know a little bit more, uh, just let me know what the question is down below and I will do my best to answer you guys. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well. Make sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.